Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Mu Chong. I'm from Wisconsin Medicine. Uh, I'll be giving a talk on the topological data analysis of dynamically changing brain networks. Uh, the title has been changed uh, a little bit uh, to reflect the <laughs> ever-changing research direction. Uh, the, this talk is based on a two paper. One is published in, uh, last year in a network neuroscience. It deals with uh, the, the Betty numbers. And uh, the, another paper in a journal of a neuroscience method. It deals with uh, modeling the dynamic changing uh, the brain networks. I'd like to thank uh, my collaborators and uh, co-authors. Uh, it's uh, a collaboration with many uh, groups uh, with uh, many different uh, uh, schools. Uh, people from the University of Wisconsin Medicine, also you am from the South Carolina, and uh, Hernando's team in Kaust Haeyong from Seoul National University, also Victor from Australia. Uh, we will explain the, the time series data we used. It's called the resting state functional MRI. And uh, the data set is actually used in the, this paper the resting state fMRI is obtained in three Tesla MRI scanner. A person uh, lie down on the scanner and the uh, guy scan while they are doing nothing. That's why it's called the resting state. And uh, how big the data is? Actually, the, the for usually structural MRI, the image resolution is one millimeter. DTI is about two millimeter. fMRI can be either two millimeter or three millimeter but we actually used a 2 millimeter resolution. And uh, at each uh, voxel position A and B, C, we can have uh, this kind of the time series. So in the case of the 3 millimeter resolution, you, we have uh, about uh, well, uh, more than 20,000 voxels. Uh, and so that basically give us uh, 0.7 billion network connections if you are trying to do the network modeling. So this is gigantic data. It takes about uh, 5 gigabytes of memory. And in a slow computer, it may take 6 minutes to just load and save it into hard drive. The racing step MRI used in studies uh, scanned at a 2 millimeter resolution uh, over 14 minutes. So that gave us uh, uh, 0.73 sec second between scans. We have a total 1200 uh, time point. And uh, so this is a huge data with uh, more than 400 subjects and uh, 2 gigabytes per subject. That will give us about uh, 800 gigabytes of data. So Uh, for network with uh, 300,000 uh, nodes, it's uh, very difficult to uh, compute anything. Huh? For example, how many cycles are in the network? That's hard for this kind of the uh, gigantic networks. Uh, also, visualization is difficult. So we actually did uh, some sort of the data reduction. Uh, the data reduction is done uh, using an existing parcellation that actually partition the brain into 116 regions. So this color basically represents the specific brain regions. And then we actually average the, the fMRI time series within this region. And that gives us uh, this type of the time series data. So vertically, indicate the brain regions and horizontal direction is time so it's basically us give us like 116 by the 1200 matrix and this matrix is available for all the bonded subject we used it and you can download the data set 
Now you can really use this data set as long as you uh, give a proper credit for the, this data. Uh, uh, since fMRI data is very noisy, it is actually necessary to do some filtering to improve the performance. I think uh, the in general performance may increase if you do the, the some sort of the spatial denoising or some sort of temporal denoising. Uh, and uh, the way we actually did the uh, temporal denoising, the basically I said that at the, the region level is to use the Fourier expansion. We basically did the Fourier expansion of the signal and use the, the coefficient of the expansion as the feature, and we are correlating this across the uh, different uh, brain regions to obtain the, this dynamic changing and correlation matrices. Dynamic changing correlation matrices are then fit into chemist clustering and uh, the, the states may space are uh, estimated. We use the elbow method to actually automatically determine the number of clusters. And the, here we have uh, state one, state two, state three. And the question is if they are topologically different. To answer that question, we can use uh, existing method graph theory or graphical models, but graph theory has uh, the, this problem of the thresholding. You don't exactly know where you have to threshold the, this correlation matrices. Also, the existing graphical models are very often time consuming. It's not necessarily give you the uh, best uh, computational solutions. So we use the partial homology, which we can obtain the result very quickly. Uh, uh, for this, we actually use the two concepts, uh, graph filtrations and exact uh, topological inferences. Now, the strength and the weakness of each method is actually explained in this uh, very nicely written review paper by the Victor Solo, so you can read it. Let's explain to what the graph filtrations are. The graph filtration is actually explained in this paper uh, in detail. The graph filtration is defined by, from a weighted graph on network consisting of a node set and edge weight. Uh, so starting with this weighted graph, we actually need to threshold it somewhere with the epsilon, uh, which basically serves as a filtration value. So any edge that's smaller than epsilon, we basically threshold it and make the network to be a binary network. Then the, as we increase the, the threshold values, we can have uh, this uh, filtration, which is basically a subset of nested uh, graphs. So that's how we define the graph filtration. The concept of graph filtration was first introduced by our group in 2011 Mikai and uh, 2012 in RTP transactions on medical imaging. Uh, so using this graph application, we can actually quantify uh, network differences. So given two networks, we basically construct uh, the two graph filtration and then we basically measure distance between the, these two graph filtrations. The graph filtration is characterized by the, the Betty numbers at each filtration value. So from a uh, graph here, uh, consisting of a four node, we are actually deleting one edge at a time and forming a graph filtration. Then along the way, we can compute Betty zero and Betty one numbers. So we call this a uh, Betty plot, and we can actually show that uh, these Betty plots are actually monotone in the case of graph filtration. The, and 
uh, monotonicity of the battery 0 and battery 1 uh, can be proved quite easily. Uh, the monotonicity of the battery 0 is uh, intuitive. Once, uh, whenever we delete the edges, the number of connected components actually increases by at most 1, so battery 0 actually increases by 0 and 1. On the other hand, uh, battery 1, uh, it's just slightly complicated. However, it, uh, we can look at the oil characteristic, which is given by the difference in uh, battery numbers, or difference in node and edges. Uh, so we can actually write the battery 1 as a function of the battery 0, and uh, number of nodes and uh, number of edges. So number of the nodes are actually fixed, but the uh, edges, uh, number of edges are decreasing while the battery 0 is also increasing, but the increase is only by 1 or the 0. So eventually, uh, uh, battery 1 actually decreases or stays the same. Uh, that's why actually why we have uh, this monotonicity. Uh, let's explain the, how we actually compute the battery 1 of the graph filtration. The algorithm actually uses the monotonicity, so the computation is quite fast. So given a complete graph, we have a P node and the Q edges, where the number of edges are basically P times P minus 1 divided by 2. Then that gives us uh, like a battery 0, 1, then just single connected component. And battery 1 is uh, given by the Euler characteristic. Then we delete the one edge so that the, while the, the number of nodes stay the same, but number of connection or edges are decreased by one, but still the battery zero is one, and battery one is only uh, battery one is basically given by the older characteristic. Now we pro we actually did the, this process iteratively, deleting one edge at a time. Eventually, we will end up with a node set where the, the there's no edges and the number of connected component is P and the battery one is basically zero. So this process is iteratively continuous. Now, this algorithm requires computing the battery zero, how the battery zero changes over the graph filtration. And there are many algorithms out there we can do. And the one particular algorithm that I want to mention is it's actually related to the, the minimum sparring tree construction. So in the case of minimum sparring construction, we are basically adding one edge at a time. So, so this is uh, the batch zero construction and batch zero number computation is basically inverse process of the, this uh, minimum tree construction. So based on this algorithm, we actually computed and plotted the batch, uh, battery zero plot and battery one plot for three states. As you can see, they are quite different, and it, they clearly show that uh, we can actually separate the different states with uh, this uh, battery plot. So then the next question is obviously, even though it looks uh, quite separable, we need to provide uh, some quantification. And we provide this in terms of the probability statement using a statistical schematic test. This is how we develop the exact topological inference. This provides the p-value statement in relation to the, the hypothetical testing. The exact topological inference is done through Kolmogorov Shiminov distance, which is basically motivated by the case uh, test procedure in non-parametric test. Now, given that the two different graph filtration, G1 and G2, of the filtration value between 0 and 1, we actually define uh, this case distance as the supremum between the, this batting number differences over the filtration. And uh, this is not exactly proper distance or metric because it doesn't satisfy the one action. So the distance uh, between the two graph filtration 
equal to zero does not imply, imply that the two networks or two graphitations are identical. However, we don't need to worry about that in practice because the property of this distance becoming zero is essentially a uh, zero. So in practice, we don't actually need to worry about this. It's a major zero set. The static inference on the bad plot difference is done by testing the null hypothesis that the two plots are equivalent for every parcel filtration values. Now, this is done by actually using a test statistic, which is basically the distance between two, two curves and uh, try to determine the, the property distribution of the this distance under the null hypothesis. So basically we need to estimate the, the distribution of the null and uh, well that can be done in many ways but uh, the one way we can do this without any kind of model assumption is to use the permutation test and whether in this case under the null hypothesis we can actually interchange the uh, data and uh, so in this case the data means that the uh, actual petty, val uh, petty plot values a particular filtration uh, so then we actually see where this object the distance from the data huh, is located with respect to the, the the estimated empirical null distribution so we basically need to estimate the property that the distance is above the object of the distance. The null distribution can be empirically estimated uh, using the permutation test. So this is an example of the one parcel permutation between two different uh, filtrations. Now, under the null assumption, we can actually interchange the, the value of the, this uh, uh, filtration values However, we still need uh, this monotonicity even after the permutation. So that basically gives us uh, some sort of constraint on a permutation group. And uh, we keep doing this. And uh, how many permutations are there? Well, it can be computed combinatorially. So this is another permutation we are seeing here. This is example, but the three node example. So the filtration start from the zero and zero and end at uh, 3 and 3 for the Betty 1 uh, plot. So we encode this uh, the graph filtration as a coordinate, x and y coordinates in the grid. So start from grid point 0, 0 and end at uh, 3, 3. Then if uh, one number increases, its uh, coordinates is changing. And in this case, 2, 1 is basically two coordinate check changing. So in that way, if we emulate every possible pathways between the grid, we can actually compute the number of the, the permutation. It's a 2Q, choose Q. So using the distance measure, we can actually count the number of the pathways between the two grid point, the left, uh, bottom corner to the right top corner and uh, so there are total 2q choose a q number of the pathways now to compute the property or the p-value we need to basically compute the, the property that the distance is above this threshold d now d is basically here uh, intercept in uh, the red line and uh, to, uh, then following the some sort of combinatorial argument, we can actually set up the iteration and compute this in a sequential manner. The method of code is available. The proof of the, this statement is given in the, the 2017 EP paper and Mikai paper as well. And the Mikai paper has a slightly different uh, proof actually. More or less the same, but uh, I bet it's a much better written. And the long time, 
compared to the traditional permutation test and our method is that uh, our method is really best so there's uh, almost no uh, computational bottleneck however uh, for a large sample size uh, the exact formula uh, provided in the previous uh, slide may not work so we need uh, an asymptotic result for instance if you try to compute the 1000 choose 500 in MATLAB you will get error message uh, because uh, the number the total number of the permutation is bigger than the, the usual 16 digit uh, numerical system uh, for a large sample uh, so we have uh, this asymptotic formula the formula is quite accurate actually so but uh, you only need about uh, five terms and you don't need an infinite number of terms here so you need uh, only five terms and that will give you uh, the very accurate uh, approach approximation to the, the this property for reasonably large q i think a q above 100 uh, you can actually use this formula Uh, based on the proposed method, we plotted the bet 0 and bet 1 plots for step 1, 2, and 3. Then, based on the exact uh, topological inference procedure, we compute p value between any two pairs of the plots, and they all show p values smaller than 0 0.001, indicating that this event cannot possibly happen by random chance alone, so they are very strong biological signal. So we conclude that the brain network changes between the three states and uh, they are topologically different. So we actually perform the validation. The validation model is published in uh, the, this journal paper last year and uh, the, the we propose the uh, uh, mixed effect model where we can actually model the, some sort of the modular structure. So we can actually generate uh, two networks with uh, different uh, modular structure. This kind of means that uh, they have a different topology. So based on the, the proposed simulation model, we perform the simulation 100 times and uh, what we report in here is the average result. Now, in the case of the, the, the no network difference in table one, we use a 20 node simulation, and uh, the most methods are performing reasonably okay. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the existing methods are not performing well in the case of the network differences. Cache distance are actually performing uh, better. Now, the performance actually increases when we actually increase the number of the node. I think it has something to do with the number of the features it, where we can actually characterize the topology better with the more number of nodes. Actually. So that's why we actually see a better performance. Uh, this ends my talk and thank you for listening to this uh, video. Now, we are actually hiring a new postdoc so you can apply for the position uh, we you don't have to know the, the brain imaging or network modeling uh, but uh, you need to have a certain skill mostly either computational mathematical or machine learning so if you're interested in position or if you know the person who might be interested in the position the, please uh, contact me thank you